Hello, welcome to Stone Magpie Channel for this, my second Floss Tube video. After my first one, I did get rather excited, so I have been internet shopping and I said I was going to have three whips. I'm going to have a few more than that, I think. So today I'm going to show you the progress on my whip. I'm going to show you the new start I made and I'm going to go through and share the things I purchased, kits and charts, and tell you a little bit about the plans I've got for those. So let's start by showing you the progress on my current whip. This one I started in September last year. It is the Dream Pattern Four Seasons kit on 14 count Aida in white. And I'll show you the picture of where I got to on this kit at the beginning of January. So during January, I have progressed into the summer section of this kit. So you can see here, we've got some puffy cloud. We have got the start of a gap where the bee sits and we've got an apple and strawberry. Down the left side of this leaf, which I will show you a bit more in a moment, and some of the green detail here. So I've done quite a lot in the four days of stitching that I managed to do in January. And I have to say a thank you to Teresa Little Stitcher for her free downloadable spreadsheet showing whips. I think it's now going to be really useful when I get a lot of kits on the go. So that's how I know I spent four days in January stitching, but they weren't all full days. Um, I haven't plotted how many hours I've spent on this one, and it's something I may well consider doing as my flush tube develops. So, Going back to this leaf detail here, when I started around here doing the autumn section, I decided to make this leaf like one of those skeleton leaves that you get when you do crafting. And it was really successful in the autumn section. So I continued to do that in the summer section and I don't think it's as successful just doing the half stitch rather than the full cross. In these dark green areas, I think you can see a bit too much white through there. Now, because there are areas of the white in this canvas, I think it may well be okay, but I might relook at that once I've finished the whole of the summer section to see if it just looks a little bit too gappy. So that's something I need to keep an eye on. So looking at the chart again here, it would help if it was the right way around. <laughs> you can see this is the apple detail here. So there's still a little bit to go on there and a bit of the background too with that strawberry. There's the bee detail that we've got a bit of a gap for. And it's a really fun kit to do this one. Lots of different colors in this. And it's just simple and it's not on a frame at all. It's a stiff enough Aida that I don't need a frame for this one. So that is the progress of my whip. The next thing I have to show you is a new start. And it is this kit here in an envelope from Ami Shop. Here is the design. It's so pretty. It really is lovely. And right in the middle is the start of the grasshopper. Now I called this grasshopper kit in my first floss tube, but it's actually called Dandelion One. I'm not sure why, because I can't quite spot the dandelion. We've got thistles and we've got some wild flowers, but not dandelion. <laughs> Anyway, so I called it Grasshopper and this is my new start and I'll show you just how much I got done in the one day that I stitched this one. It's on this beautiful red Aida and this is where 
I got to. I don't think that's too bad because as I said, it's not a full day stitching and there are a mix of stitches in this one. We've got half stitches, we've got one strand full cross and then the two strand full cross in the majority of this background sunshine here. Because this red is such a vibrant red, I do think you can see some of it through that colourway, but once, but once all of the other detail is in, I don't think it will be as obvious. Now this one, I did use a Q-snap frame for the first time, which I got from Amazon. And I got this eight inch, 20 centimeter, because it's manageable size. So the Q-snap frame, really easy to put together and really easy to get your material on to the frame. The bit that I struggled with, and I'm hoping for a little bit of advice here, is once your material's on and snapped into place, how do you get these off easily? Because <laughs> it's a good job I wasn't recording live or anything at the time, because the air was rather blue. <laughs> I really struggle to get these off as you can see, I can't even get them off now. So what I have to do is take the whole frame apart that way, rather than just remove these. Does it just get easier? <laughs> or am I, am I missing a trick on those? If you could give me some advice on that, it would be really appreciated. But as I said, getting the material on was fine. <laughs> So I'm hoping to work a little bit more on this kit throughout February and I'll give you an update at the end of the month. So whilst I was looking for a Q-snap frame on Amazon, I did come across some more frames that I thought would be useful to have and that is these. I've got three frames of different sizes, really cute colours and I mean look at that diddy one, it's so sweet isn't it? I don't know if I'd ever have a kit that's small enough to use, but I just really liked this set. And these are more like the traditional wooden type hoops, but they have the screw top. So it's going to be really interesting for me to try these out on a kit or two as I go along. Not tried those yet, so watch this space. They also came with a set of needles and these are the gold plated eye needles. So, very nice. Now, they are all quite small frames. So I did want a selection of different sizes and different styles to try out. So the next frame that I chose is this one in a lovely protective sleeve. And it's from Luca S. I actually found these on mariescrossstitch.co.uk and I will link the website below so that you can find it if you're interested to see. So inside the lovely sleeve is the frame and this one is more of a traditional wooden frame, all in bits, <laughs> for me to build, great. And here is the diagram so you can see now these are the frames that I used to use a long time ago, but you had to stitch your cross stitch kit to the frame. And I hated doing that. I never enjoyed doing that. So these ones have those snap fittings again. So it'll be interesting to see when I do my larger kit, what this frame is like too. So lots of things to try and lots of really exciting new start to get going with. And I'm going to show you a couple of kits right now. So whilst I was on mariescrossstitch.co.uk, I came across a kit that I adore. I actually saw this kit as a diamond painting on Dreamers Designs and missed out because it sold out before I bought it. So when I was having a look around the website, this one showed up and I knew I just had to buy it straight away. Look at the magnificence of this flamingo. 
This picture is fabulous, isn't it? Look at all the different colours in it. Oh, I just loved it. And I thought, OK, this one is not going to pass me by again. So this is by Lucas S again. And let me get my glasses on to read the detail. It is a 16 count Aida. I think it's a black fabric. We will have a look at that in a moment. We've got 62 colours and it's 25 by 32 centimetres. Now it does say that it's a five heart skill level. So that'll be interesting as I am just restarting cross stitch after 20 odd years. Hopefully I've still got some skills. <laughs> Looking at the detail of this picture, we've got the colours in that eye, we've got the feathery details with the lovely long neck and feathers, the big blossomy flowers, and then the background being a little bit more subtle with the line details. It is lovely. And the fact that the cross stitch detail can bring out all those finer details. It is gorgeous. So excited to get a start on this one. So turning the kit around, you can see the Aida is black here and I've heard that black is quite difficult to stitch on, a bit hard on the eye. So I'll be interested to see how that goes when I do start the stitching. We've got all of our threads pre-sorted, wrapped around. Again, it's the first time I've had a kit that they have been wrapped rather than threaded through the whole type storage. So, a really interesting kit for me to get going with and I'm hoping to make a start on this one during February and I'll be able to give you an update in my next floss tube of how I'm getting on with that. I am going to use the wooden frame with this kit um, and I think I'll probably take it off the frame rather than leave it on continuously. But again, I'll give you a feedback on that at a later date. So another kit that I got on the website, same website, <laughs> but this was a little add-on kit that is in the sale, was in the sale, is in the sale. You'll have to check if you're interested in this lovely kit so calming with those sepia type colours by Royal Paris. It is a kit that uses anchor threads. It's by Kim Anderson in 2007 and it's called India. Isn't she gorgeous? Look at the detail there on her dress and looking so serene in those sepia tones. There are some lovely colours in there with the browns and that bamboo faded background. She is really sweet. Looking at the back again, you can see here we've got a 14 count white Aida with 100% cotton threads, an instruction chart and a shade scale. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 colours in this one. All in those browns and natural colours. Really, really calming, I thought. I thought this was a really lovely kit. Did it say the size? Now it says the fabric size is 27.5 by 39 centimetres. Ah, here's the finished size up here, is 28.5 by 18. That is going to be the finished size of this adorable cross stitch. So again, the details are in the description box below for that website.
If you're interested in seeing how these things progress during my channel, I do invite you to subscribe. It's always lovely to have you alongside with me and I really do appreciate you watching, subscribing, liking and sharing. So thank you. Next portion of the video is going to be the charts that I sourced, all of them from Etsy but different sellers. So I'll go through each one, one by one, and I'll tell you my plans for each. All of the charts that I found on Etsy have got a bit of a theme. I couldn't resist any of them. They are all beautiful. And the first one is this fantastic full zodiac celestial circle. Now my printer unfortunately hasn't done this one justice because it has sort of done a gradient type print whereas the whole chart is the same colourway and I think it's more like the bottom half of this picture. Now this chart is by Vivsters on Etsy and I will put the link in the description box below so you can find it easily if you want to attempt this one too. A really modern design really fantastic, really clear, when you can see all of the different symbols on the outer circle. We've then got the constellations within that mid section, and then the zodiac symbols within the center of the moon and the sun middle. Really, really fabulous, lots of details on this one, and it is a rather large kit to sew. There on the chart, there are different sizes depending what count you choose. So I am debating whether to do an 18 count, which would be a 67.8 centimetre square, rather large, or a 22 count, which would bring it down to 55 centimetre squares. But 22 count might be a little bit trying on my eye. So I am debating a 20 count to get it somewhere in the middle of the two. I haven't got the fabric yet because, again, it's another debate with myself on the colourway for the background. The chart recommends a pale white, off-white or cream. I'm wondering whether to do a sparkle white. So let me know what you think on that one too. I don't want to muddy any of these really modern symbols with any extra detail in the background at all, but I don't want just a basic white. So that's why I thought a sparkle might be a little bit different. So again, let me know what you think in the comments below. I have had an idea as well how to personalise this picture as I stitch. Everybody is made up of the three major signs in their horoscope. So you have your star sign, your rising sign and your moon sign. So an idea I had was to outline your star sign, moon sign and rising sign to bring that out in the picture itself and make it really personable. You could, if you wanted to, then stitch a little key at the bottom. So if you did your star sign, for example, I'm a Libra. So if I circled that in a gold, perhaps, then I could do gold here, star sign. Then my rising sign is Leo. Rawr. <laughs> so I could outline Leo, can't find him at the moment. Where's Leo? There he is. I could outline him in a different colour and again put the key at the bottom. Or if you wanted to make it less about you <laughs> and more about the family, you could as well do an outline of your star sign, your family's outlines of their star signs and again put a key at the bottom of who they belong to. So I would be Libra, Suzanne, then I would do Capricorn for my husband with the key and so on for the family. So that's an, a way to personalise this fabulous chart if you're thinking of doing that as well. And no, I'm not going to be doing whip and chats talking about star signs. I've done that before with my diamond painting. And if you want to explore the characteristics, 
gift ideas, things like that to do with each star sign, I do have a playlist called Zodiac Circle. I am diamond painting the sections for each month during those videos, but if you want to watch while you're cross-stitching, I invite you to have a little look at those. So the second chart that I've got from Etsy is this one. As I mentioned, I am a Libra, so saw this chart and really liked it. I thought it was such a modern depiction of Libra. And I've got some ideas for this one. Looking at the printout I've got, again, the printer hasn't done this one justice because the colours are more like those on the right hand side. This one is by Candle Moon Crafts. And again, I will put the link in the description box below so you could find that for yourself. Now, this one has all of this cloudiness behind the scales. So my idea was to stitch the scales themselves with a two strand full cross and the background with perhaps a one strand full cross or, or the half stitch. We'll see, I might have to experiment with this one. Now, all of that dark blue background that you can see is supposed to be stitched with a 939. And I thought, let's see if I can find a different way of doing that. So what I've bought is a navy blue 18 count Iada, and I'm going to hopefully not have to stitch all of that dark blue to save on threads as well as time. So I'm going to see how that will go. This navy isn't quite a 939, but I think it'll be dark enough to create that design without too much of a problem. When I was looking for that Iada on Etsy, I saw some beautiful Iadas. I was very, very tempted one that looked a bit like the universe with dark blues and oranges and yellows with like a star constellation pattern. But because this is going to be quite cloudy in the background, I didn't want to lose that detail. So I've ended up going for a plain navy. I've also thought about the threads because there are a number of threads in this one. And looking at DMC threads, they are quite expensive. So what I've decided to do is buy from Amazon a pack of 450 colours. So this should set me up because I'm, again, as I said, um, starting cross stitching after a long time. I haven't built up any leftovers yet. So I thought this would be a really good starting point to get lots of colours to be able to do the charts and see how that goes. The colour matching, I'm not sure how close it would be to DMC and I'm not sure on the quality of the threads, whether they may go a little bit fuzzy. Um, so again, one to keep my eye on and to test out. So we'll see how those threads go and I'm hoping that they are good enough quality to complete this chart. I did also have the idea of putting some gold th metallic through that scale detail. So I also got from Amazon a little pack of different colored metallics I'm hoping that this gold here will be able to be blended within the scales to create a little bit of sparkle. So lots of experimentation to be done. The third design that I got on Etsy is incredible. It is a Libra design in a completely different way. Lots of symbolism in this one and isn't she fabulous? This design is by Puntago Petite Patterns on Etsy and I will put the link in the description box below for you. We've got the Libra constellation in the top left there. We've got the scales very subtly around her head detail. And then we've got the blindfold, which is part of the justice on the tarot cards. And she's holding a sword behind her back because again in tarot, Libra is part of the sword family. So lots of beautiful details 
Again, quite a few dark blues in this one, but we've got that turquoise design of a, of a gown with the cherry blossom. It is just beautiful. Really looking forward to starting the stitching on this one. On a 14 count, the size of that would be about 18 by 25. So I've decided to do a 16 count just to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to get a cream Iada to do this one. I'm waiting for that to arrive, so I haven't got that to show you today, but that's what I've ordered already. And again, I'm going to use the pack of the threads from Amazon. I'm hoping that both of those Libra kits don't use the same colourways so that I can get away with one pack of those. Again, something to try out and test because this one also has quite a few colours in it. I think I did start looking at the DMC threads and it was going to be nearly £100 to try and get both kits in the DMC. <laughs> So because I'd done quite a lot of shopping in January, straight after Christmas, I needed to try and find a budget way. But if those threads don't come up to scratch, then that might have to be rethought. So I think I have done extremely well with my shopping. I am so pleased with everything I've found and I'm really looking forward to showing you my new starts, hopefully next month. Whether I start them all during February is another matter, so we will have to see on that. The last thing that I want to show you for my shopping is these. Of course, because I needed to have some sort of way to kit up those charts, I have got a pack of 10 different colours in here. So that's going to be a really good way of sorting out those threads. Something I haven't really got my head around as yet is, with this pack, how I'm going to sort these out and store them. Because once I delve into these, they're going to end up everywhere, aren't they? A question I have for you experienced cross-stitchers is, what do you do with your leftover threads? How do you store yours? Do you wind them? Do you keep them on these sort of storage systems in colour matched ways? Please, would you let me know your ideas? Because I need to think of a way that I'm going to keep my threads all nice and tidy. Ah, right, lots to think about, lots to go at. And I am so excited to be sharing it with you. So thank you so much for joining me. I do have another kit that I haven't yet shown you. I'll share that with you probably in the next floss tube. And it is all about the Chinese New Year that we are heading into the Year of the Dragon. So I hope to share that kit with you in my next floss tube. If you're interested in seeing what happens on my cross stitch journey, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. It would be lovely to have you here with me. and. I always love to hear your comments and again, help me with those dilemmas on the Q-snap and the thread storage. It would be really appreciated. Until next time, enjoy your own stitching. Take care everyone, bye.